Hey guys, so we're going to continue with looking at adjustment layers. So in the last videos, we looked at some non-destructive black and white adjustment level techniques. So what we're going to do now is we're going to continue on looking at some of these other adjustment layers because in your first portfolio project that you're going to be submitting um, at the end of next week, I imagine most of your photos might need some minor tweaks to contrast or value or color here and there. Some might not, some might be okay, but I would hope that some do need adjustments so you can get some practice and first-hand experience using these adjustment layers. So in your resources folder in La Lima, there's another sample image for you. Um, I have it on my desktop here. It's this Sienna Blue Still Life. So let's go ahead and download that and get that ready, and then we'll just open that here in Photoshop. So I just had it on my desktop there. So also, if and if those of you that are on Macs, um, basically I have my hot corner set up, so every time I move into a corner, I get to my desktop very quickly. It's a nice little trick if you'd like to do that. You can just go into System Preferences here. And if you go to Mission Control and Hot Corners, and you can set each Four corner to do a specific thing or go somewhere, whatever you'd like. I always just keep it on desktop there, so it's a nice, it's a nice way to quickly get to my desktop and get move Photoshop in and out of the window. So, anyways, so now that we have this image in here, let's go ahead and unlock the layer. You can double click or click on that lock, and that will unlock it so that we can now. We can now do stuff to this image. Oops, Command Z, get out of that. Okay, so remember where our adjustment layers were. We had three places to access them. You can access them up top, and down here, and then here as well. So we're going to use these windows down here just for the sake of consistency here. So let's click on Add a New Adjustment Layer. And last time I showed you channel mixer in black and white and hue and saturation in relationship to black and white. But I'm just going to go through and show you some color adjustments here. So these are grouped. So here, brightness, contrast, levels, curves, and exposure. These four right here are all connected to the value or the light and darks of each, each um, image. So let's click on brightness, contrast. And this is this gives us some basic control here. So just like on your TV monitors, right? You have brightness control, which is going to determine the light and dark. And then contrast is pushing the extremes between the values. So more differences are happening when we move that contrast up and brightness to the right or to the left is going to add light and dark. So that's one way that you can go about getting just some quick initial uh, value adjustments. So we can go ahead and delete, delete that layer. And let's look at the next ones here. So we have levels and curves. Now these both operate pretty similarly. These will show you a histogram of your value and I'll go into histogram a little bit later but basically this is a representation of the lights and the darks here we can see our output levels black being 0 and 255 being white and this distribution is showing us where these values are larger right so we can see on the right hand side here we see how this drops down here and then this spike shoots way up like that that's the white cup right here right and then throughout the image it's showing us the distribution of middle grays and right now what it's showing me is that this image has largely this big this peak right here and this peak it's most likely these darker elements right here this dark blue the shadow all the shadow up here the shadowing here so that's what that's showing us now the way that you can go about tweaking this is if I click here and if I move this dark slider to the right my image is going to get darker because this right here where it's set now is telling me that this this edge is going to be where black is going to be. 
But as I move that in closer, Photoshop is saying wherever I put this slider is where it wants the darkest value to be. So as I move this out to the right, this is going to get darker. Okay, let's reset that back here. And then same thing on the right here. Right now where this slider is, is telling Photoshop that's where the brightest white is going to be. But as I move this in, it's now wherever I place this, that value along the distribution is now going to be where the whitest white is. So as I bring this one to the left, the image will get lighter. And then in the middle here, this is what's being determined as the middle value at 1.0. Wherever I move this, it will tell Photoshop that is the middle value, okay? So you can make adjustments here as necessary. And then if you wanna shorten the um, tonal range or make the tonal range more limited, this is where you would make these adjustments here where you would set your output levels here numerically. You can see 26 to 230 would be the widest range that we're gonna get. So a bit more control there. Go ahead and delete this adjustment layer. Let's go back in. So curves, it's much the same way. It's, it's similar, but this is a different graph distribution here. Curves is another way of showing the distribution. Again, we get that same spike right here. You can't really see it, but it does climb up close there on the right, on the right side. We can see this diagram here. And here's where you can adjust the levels on this, on this line right here. So generally what, what you would do with curves is you would want to adjust this a little bit so you have this slight S curve moving this way. Right? That'll generally bring your contract, your value from the darker values a little bit more intense. And this would make your whites a little bit more intense as well, too. Okay. Let's delete that. Okay. And then Let's look at our exposure. So just like a camera, right, we have exposure. This is essentially how much light is being let in to expose the image. So we can move the slider basically to simulate more or less light that has been coming in to expose the film. Okay, And then offset and gamma correction, these both deal with light and dark as well too. You can see that one is going to adjust somewhat the mid-tones. So you get this kind of smoky look as you play with that offset. And then same with gamma correction. You usually don't have to do too much to these, but again, these are the adjustments that you can make to play with value and your contrast. Okay. Let's delete that layer here. So those, those here are grouped to play with your light and dark and adjust those levels. And again, the histogram we'll get into a little bit later on. I think I'd, I'd rather prefer you guys be looking at these images and getting a, sense of, getting a sense of color and value from just observation and, and, and looking to see what looks right. Because sometimes if you go just off what the histogram is telling you, um, you don't always get the best dynamic range of, of colors and value. So for now, if you have to make adjustments, I mean, use these as you'd like, but I would prefer that you, you know, look at the image and try to make the adjustments by sight. And then you can always tell. So you can always turn that on or off to see how your image is changing, right? So these down here are the color, are the color adjustment layers we can do. So let's click on vibrance here. And pretty basic here. So saturation, if we recall from the black and white adjustment layer, uh, or the sorry, the hue saturation layer, basically this is just desaturating the color. If I move the slider all the way to the left, I'm removing all of the color. And if I move all the way to the right, I'm adding more intensity to those colors. When it comes to vibrance, now this is a slider that's going to adjust the more mid-level or muted tones. It won't really affect the the Saturation will affect all of the image, while vibrance will leave the well-saturated colors alone. So this is a little bit more of a finer tweak that you can do. 
So you can see as I'm moving the slider, it doesn't really change too much. That's because there's a, a good deal of saturation already in the image. So the vibrance will affect more the mid-level tones that maybe don't have as much saturation. Um, hue and saturation we looked at when we were doing our black and white conversions, but now just so you can see what this looks like in, in color. So again, saturation, we know what that will do. Hue is gonna change the overall hue range that we're looking at. So right now, if I move this here to the left, hues are gonna change considerably, right? Usually you don't really wanna mess with hue too much, if at all, right? So again, we know what saturation will do and then lightness will affect the light and the dark. Let's delete that. Let's go into the next one. So color balance. So this gives you quite a bit of control over your darks, your mids, and your highlights, but you do have to spend some time with it and adjust each one here. So if we, right now we're on midtones. So if I were to find an area that I feel like would be the appropriate midtone, let's say this silver cup here, that looks to be about a midtone, and then I can adjust the yellow and the blue for the midtones. And what you want to be looking for is in that midtone area, we want to see where it starts to look too yellow as I go to the left or too blue as I go to the right and try to find that area that is in between that doesn't allow one of those two hues to dominate. That looks about right. And then same with magenta and green. We'll move that slider around until we see that it's changing to green or to magenta and we'll find that happy medium. Now this image looked to be pretty well balanced from the get-go, but we can always just check and, and see. So, okay, that looks about right. And then if we go into highlights, so this is where we wanna look for white. So right here, this white coffee cup here, that's what I'm looking at. And I'll do the same adjustments. I'll kind of move this slider until I see if that white is turning a little bit too warm and yellow or too cool and blue, and I'll try to find a spot where it seems to be in the middle. Same with magenta and green. I'll look for where it starts to change and then where it, it seems to be a nice neutral in between. And same with cyan and red. And I'll look for where it seems to be between and then on shadows these are looking at the darks obviously and usually a small tweak here can have big effects so you just want to be really careful here if I kind of move this you can see it changes pretty drastically so look at those darker areas and try to distinguish that in between area so between magenta and green right now and again, some of these images may not need much in terms of color balance or correction, but again, so if I go up here and I click on photography, this is gonna bring up a histogram as well. And you can do the same thing with color balances. You can look and see where the, the, the graph and that histogram would be. But again, we will get to that. So don't, I'm just showing you these right now so you can do some on the fly adjustments. Now let's change that back to essentials. Okay, and let's delete that layer, adjustment layer. And black and white, we went over that, so I'm not gonna go into that now. Photo filter, this is more or less just picking out preset filters that Photoshop has. Here we can see, right, we have all these different presets. We can select a type of the, the color of the filter that we want to apply, and then how intense or how opaque or how transparent that that would be, right? So you don't really, we don't really need to mess with this at all for, for what we're doing right now. And channel mixer, again, I showed you, I showed you this a little bit with the black and white adjustment layers. But so, so we can see it in practice here with color. 
Here we can adjust each the RGB individually. Our reds, our greens, our blues, and then the overall lightness or darkness there. So that's for our adjustment layers for what we're going to be doing for the portfolio project. That sh should be sufficient. Again, you may not need to do much at all, if anything, to some of these images. But I would say try to tweak them as best you can and, and pay attention to your image and look for you know, the tonal range and those black and white images and then in the color images for your portfolio that you'll be submitting next week. Um, try, to, try to get a sense of the overall color balance if there are things that need to be tweaked, the adjustment layers. What we've gone over thus far, you'll be able to do that. And I will pick this up next time.